Hey, you guys who love the Spitfire and enjoy flying it in a sim will know how important the rudder bias or the rudder trim is. And you're probably familiar with this problem too, demonstrated here with the Authenticate rudder trim bias wheel. You can see clearly how out of sync the trim wheel inputs are compared to the sim behavior. Microsoft Flight Simulator is particularly bad at this. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve this problem. Oh, and if you haven't got one of these Authenticate trim wheels, then I've got to ask, why not? It's the easiest thing to print, even if you're brand new to 3D printing, and definitely the easiest to assemble. I will link to a video in the description where one of the guys in the Authenticate community made a video of himself assembling a Spitfire trim wheel in seven minutes and two seconds flat, and he wasn't the fastest. So, I'll include a link to where you can download the files entirely free to print one of these yourself. A little project for the holidays, maybe. One of the great privileges of Authenticate working with the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight has been access to the ultimate reference source for any questions about how a Spitfire flies or how the controls should feel. Because not only have I been able to get hands-on with a number of different Spitfire marks myself, but the engineers and pilots of the BBMF have been a tremendous help answering all manner of technical questions. Ken is our primary contact this year, and at a recent visit to Coningsby, I wanted to get to the bottom of exactly how the rudder trim wheel, or the rudder bias as it's called on the Spitfire, should behave. And once we knew that, we needed to set up our Spitfire Mark 9 simulator based upon Microsoft Flight Simulator to behave in exactly the same way. First, we wanted to know how many degrees of rotation were required to go from full starboard bias to full port bias. And we found the answer for the BBMF Spitfire Mark 9 was almost two turns, more specifically 635 degrees. And then there was the question of where neutral was, and Flight Lieutenant Andy Priest answered that question for us. There is no neutral as such, as it all depends on speed. For example, at takeoff, it's wound all the way to the right to counter takeoff torque. When airborne, it's almost immediately wound off. Then it's adjusted to suit speed. At neutral or trim center, you've got around one full turn to each side. So back to our sim and we needed to calibrate the rudder bias so that it took 635 degrees of rotation to go from maximum to minimum. Now, both the DCS and IL-2 simulators have an axis input to rudder bias, which makes matters relatively easy, because even though the Authenticate rudder bias control is based on an encoder, we have the Authenticate tuning app, which will map the clicks of the encoder to a virtual axis, which can be used as the input. I will link to a video explaining more about the tuning app in the description. Unfortunately, Microsoft Flight Simulator does not provide this axis or analog input option, so I expect that most of you flying the Spitfire in MSFS have been living with this sort of problem for a long time now. You can see how massively out of sync the physical wheel is with the sim. And even if you do tricks to multiply the pulses, which the tuning app can help you with, you just can't get it right without an analog or axis input. For the rest of this video, I'm going to show you a way to get the rudder bias bang on in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And as I hinted in a recent video, it depends on a piece of software called SPAD.next. What this software allows us to do is send very precise positional values to an internal SimConnect variable in MSFS. Now, SPAD.next is a payware product, but the developer has kindly offered a 30% discount to Authenticate community members. And if you check the link in the description to my earlier video, you'll see how to get SPAD.next and how to get that 30% off. So finally, here's my Spitfire preset. And if I go to the control section, we, we can see that pins nine and 10, which are the inputs for rudder trim, don't have any code attached. So, all we do is we select 9, we hit Online Snippets, we select Authenticate as the control, and All Aircraft, and choose this. 
Wait a minute, we've got two options. What is this? Well, it turns out that the animation on the MSFS Spitfire currently shows just a single turn between full port and starboard bias. So, I thought I'd give you guys an option. If you'd like your physical trim wheel to synchronize with the sim animation, then choose the 360 option. But if you'd like it to match the real BBMF Spitfire Mark 9, then choose the 635 option. Now we go to input 10. We hit online snippets, select authenticate on the left, and choose this. Now hit the red save icon, and we're done. What I also need to remember is to go into the MSFS mappings and remove any rudder trim inputs 9 and 10 that I've put in already. And now, with a big thanks to my buddy Phil Shepard, who did most of the development on these snippets, here's a short video clip he made showing what you can expect when you've loaded them. Actually, there's one more thing I need to mention. As part of the investigation for this video, we discovered that the recommended settings for the Leo Bodner board I've previously given were not optimal. I've previously said that the encoder setting for Authenticate encoders should be one-to-one -one in the encoder configuration software. I've confirmed now it should actually be one-to-four, as shown here. Also, I now recommend that this sampling rate should be 16 milliseconds. If you don't know where to get this configuration software, I've added a download link to the description for this video. Remember too that you've selected the Authenticate device, or it may be labeled BU0836A. Well, this is one of my short videos, folks. I hope you found it helpful, and I look forward to bringing you more Authenticate in the near future. I'm going to leave you with a link to that short seven minute long trim wheel assembly video I mentioned earlier. You'll see that the community member Skyman assembles this magnificent control using nothing more than a couple of screwdrivers. So enjoy that and bye for now.